This is the Whole Care Network. Helping you tell your story one podcast at a time. Content presented in the following podcast is for information purposes only. Views and opinions expressed in this podcast are solely those of the host and guest and may not represent the views and opinions of the Whole Care Network. Always consult with your physician for any medical advice and always consult with your attorney for any legal advice. And thank you for listening to the Whole Care Network. The following podcast sometimes offers unusual solutions to usual problems. These solutions are meant for qualified agencies or individuals to put into action. And I'd be willing to bet that's not you. Listen, folks, we don't take ourselves too seriously. Neither should you. So let's go have a laugh. Welcome to Unscrew It Up. I'm Josh, and that's Amanda, and we come up with... She's waving. <laughs> she's, she was just waved. We come up with differently twisted solutions to life's little problems. Warning. Amanda, I have a question for you. So since we've started doing this, has it caused you to change how you do anything in your life as it relates to any of the things that we fixed? Like we fixed hygiene, we fixed car travel, we fixed marriage. Do you, have you taken any of these things and, and have they changed your life? Yeah, I've just started shutting your closet door so I don't see the clothes that haven't gone into the hamper. Anything else <laughs> that doesn't have to do with calling me out? No, because I'm still waiting on the Statler brothers and FedEx and whomever else to put these things into action. Have you started doing things differently? Well, yes. I've learned that I need to just be a lot better of a husband because if <laughs> I don't, it will come out on these podcasts. That's right. All right. So, so that's what see, I've learned. we fixed marriage. Also, speaking of last week, it's weird. I sent the email to statlerbrothers at gmail.com <laughs> and it got kicked back to me. I Bounced don't understand. Back to you. We are going to talk about grocery shopping today. Man, I spend a lot of my time grocery shopping. But before we do that, we have an update from Wilson Technologies. Now, folks, if you are new to us, just a reminder that Wilson Technologies actually is a subsidiary of Familiar Wilson's Media, which is our parent company. And Wilson Technologies, their motto is rather simple. Yesterday's problems solved tomorrow. Tomorrow. Was that it? Yeah, Tomorrow I think. Tomorrow solutions for yesterday's problems. Tomorrow is that it? I think so. that's better. <laughs> I think that's what it is. <laughs> anyway, we're still workshopping that <laughs> motto. I think this is the third time we changed it. Wilson Technologies is constantly working to improve our lives, and they are working on something new this week. And this actually kind of has to do with grocery shopping in a roundabout way. One of the things that sometimes I'm not prepared for is the overly peppy cashier at the grocery store. Oh, really? That want to yeah, talk to you. Yeah, you don't like to just do the small talking. Now, I don't know if that's particular to our local chain. We have a, a chain called Publix that I grew up with here in Florida. We had it down in Miami, and we have it here. And I, I don't know if they train their people to be super conversive. They're not all. But I do think they have to be polite. Right. But I'm saying, I'm wondering if that's a Publix thing or if that's just all grocery stores everywhere. That's what I'm asking. I mean, I've been in Winn-Dixie where they don't really want to talk to me. The Trader Joe's people are chatty, though. Okay. Sometimes I'm not in the mood for that. Okay. Let's say oftentimes. And I want to avoid the awkward exchange of, oh, they try to engage me. I give them a one-word answer. They feel bad. I feel bad. No one's happy. What I asked Wilson Technologies to research is kind of a play on the mood ring, you okay. know, because <laughs> well, mood ring's great because you can kind of tell where a person's at and then you can govern yourself accordingly. But a ring, I mean, it's kind of awkward. Is it if, a mood bow tie? I no, really if, want it if, to be a mood bow tie. If I'm like looking to see how someone is, mm -hmm. 
and I'm scoping them out to see if they have a ring on, especially if, let's say, it's a woman, that's really suspicious. It really is. The mood hat. Okay. The mood hat. All it right. changes color with your mood. It reminds me of, did you ever play that game, The Sims? No, I never did, but I'm aware Are you familiar of it? with yes. it? So one of the things about The Sims is they had a, an icon spinning above this each Sim's head to tell you what mood that they were in. And I thought that that was super cool. Yeah. So we can't do that yet, but we can have a mood hat that will change. So I'm at Publix. I put on my hat. Your grocery shopping That's hat? It's my or going just... out and being around people hat <laughs> okay. at this point, if this is what it's going to do for me. I go up to the grocery line. I have my mood hat on. It's gray. Checker knows. I'm not going to mess with Mr. Wilson today. Let's just get him the hell on out. <laughs> so what I heard from you, I understand you said the checker knows, but what I heard was check her nose. So in my head, this play was you had a hat and she had some sort of clown nose mood ring. Well, <laughs> although I figure if you have a clown nose as your mood ring, then it's always going to be happy. I guess. Or you're just, no, you've seen the sad clown and the serial killer clown. So you really can't trust the clowns. God. The Mood Hat uh, there by you go. Wilson right, Technologies. Fine. Look for it on your shelves soon and all of your social problems will be solved. Are you tired of boring and expensive office furniture that doesn't satisfy your appetite? Then it's time to try something new and delicious. Introducing the Spam Office Furniture Collection. Made entirely of mouth-watering Spam, our chairs, desks, and filing cabinets will satisfy your hunger and your need for comfort and efficiency all at once. No more taking lunch breaks because your office furniture will be your lunch break. And with a wide range of flavors to choose from, including classic, teriyaki, and jalapeno, you'll never get bored of your office again. So why settle for ordinary office furniture when you can have spamtastic office furniture? Try it today and bring flavor to your workplace. Ladies and gentlemen, the Wilsons will now unscrew it up. Grocery shopping. I'm so excited about this. Usually we talk about what we're going to unscrew up and it takes me almost the whole week to come up with my my solutions. And yesterday, how long did it take me? Minutes. I mean, I was done. We had lunch together and... I, we were talking about it at lunch and we decided on grocery shopping and I said, okay, I have one. I have two. I have three. I mean, just boom, boom, boom. Because I have spent so much of my life food shopping. It's a thing that has to happen. Why did it take you so quick to figure out how to fix grocery shopping, but not marriage? <sighs> now we'll move on. <laughs> All right. How many do you have? I have three. I have three as well. We'll compile our list. We'll narrow it down to five. And we'll send it to an organization or an individual to take our suggestions and give them feet, to make them work, to birth them out into the world. Who's going to do this for us this week? The Gerber Baby. Oh, perfect. Yes. Gerber Baby all up on food shelves. So the Gerber Baby has grown up. I know 100% for certain that the Gerber Baby does not Gerber Baby anymore. No. Because it's grown up. Yeah. Probably looking for something to do. Yeah, absolutely. And sitting around with its doughy face, just nappies on. <laughs> The visual is so good. Would you like to go first? Yes, I would. Okay. So during COVID, we all experienced food shopping in different ways. So there was the Instacart, which got us through. There was also the ghost. Do you remember when you had to stand outside in a line and they would let certain number of people into the grocery store at a time? Oh, sure. And then you had the arrows that showed you which way to go. So this was a lot, especially when we had a, a three-year-old when we when we went into lockdown. So we employed Instacart a lot. And I am grateful for the food deliveries. However, I don't like it when people pick out my own produce. Also, things would come and I'd say, eh, I would have, you know, if I would have been there, I would have done this. So my proposal is Zoom Instacart. Oh, that's interesting. Go ahead. So the person goes in to shop for you. 
They put on a Zoom call and then they take you to the produce section and say, all right, here are the bananas. Which ones do you want me to pick? Okay, here are the proteins. Which of these steaks and or chicken thigh packages or whatever. That way I feel I, I'm away from the germs. I can still be on my couch in my jammies, but I still have autonomy over the things that I am purchasing and paying for. That's brilliant. I don't know why they hadn't thought of that before. I love that. Zoom I honestly Instagram. thought about it during COVID. Like this wasn't, uh, this is why I was like, I already have one because I had thought about that because you know, people care about the, the especially produce. I think people have opinions about what you pick. And so I wouldn't want to be the Instacart person having to choose. Do you want the ripe avocado? Oh yeah. That Do you would... want the not ripe? Cause you're going to use it in a few days. I don't have enough information. It would be paralyzing. It would. I can't imagine being that person and, I just want to shop and being judged on my shopping. Yeah. Shopping already is annoying to me. And to be told I did it wrong, don't love that. Like, I don't really like shopping for you. And <laughs> because for that same reason. Typically tell you you're wrong. No, you don't now because I'll send you like pictures. <laughs> I will call you. I will send a, a delivery person to the house just to make sure. Oh, no, I am not getting it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but Zoom Instacart, this is my solution to you because then they don't have to be judged. I'm still doing the work. I just don't have to be there in person. Okay, you're not doing the work. Let's be clear. Well, I'm still choosing. I'm doing the mental work. You're bossing work. them around. <laughs> well, that's also a plus. All right. I like that. Zoom Instacart. Neither of those are sponsors yet. My first one is the packing up and taking stuff to the car and taking it home. Oh, yeah. That's always, I mean, first of all, they give you these really flimsy bags. Well, you're supposed to bring your bags. But most people don't. And even if they have the bags, I mean, how many times have you forgotten your bags? I mean, at least the last two weeks. They're just, in, the bags are in the pantry. They give you flimsy bags that will fall apart in your car, and it's just the whole rigmarole of, of getting the stuff into the bags, into the cart, out to your car, out of the cart, into your car, go home. The number of times you can drop something or something can fall out or the bag can break is probably infinity minus seven. Yes. Let's eliminate all of that. Packing even up the grocery cart sometimes can can be... A, pushing the grocery cart can sometimes be annoying because the carts have these little wheels that yes. go... Wiggle, 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 yes. wiggle, and that's annoying. And I'm the stubborn person who, if I get a bad cart and I kind of discover it halfway through, I will just stick with You're it. You're just going to push through it, right? Literally push through it. And then there's also the the congestion of the carts and possibly hitting someone with the carts in the aisles. And we got to eliminate okay. all of this. And it would be great if we could eliminate it with one solution. Yes, please. I have that solution. Okay. Drone pods. Drone pods. Because drones drone already pods. deliver things for Amazon. Drone pods. Okay. It's easy. You go into your store. You pick out your drone pod. It floats next to you while you shop. Anyone who's seen The Mandalorian knows that we already have this technology of the drone or pods. Or Lucasfilm does. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. Shush. Not a sponsor. Don't mention them. You put your items in the pod as you shop. As soon as you put them in the pod, the price is red. Beep. Yep. Charged to your card immediately. So we're also eliminating the lines. Jobs. No, you gotta you gotta keep up with the pods. There's always jobs. Okay. There's always jobs that we can. A job deleted is a job created. I've always said this. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. You put the stuff in the pod, the price is red and it's deducted from your credit or debit card. When you're done shopping, you enter your address into the pod, press a button, it meets you at home. That's lovely. And it meets you at home, you open the door, it floats in. So then you just take the things straight out Straight to your there. shelves and you, you take it from the pod to your shelves. Actually, what if we had our own pods? Like you oh, had you shopping pods. take it to the store pods. with you. No, you send it to the store. It meets you at the store. Okay. Because I'm thinking about the exchange of, okay, so is there- You're going to take the at, pod back. At the grocery store. Well, you'd send it back anyway, but the whole exchange of getting to the store, standing in line for a pod, eliminate all of that. You have family pods. You can use it for other shopping besides grocery shopping, although granted, your pod would have to be appreciably bigger than my pod. Okay, fine. Because I buy food for all of the people that live And in maybe house. this is a different podcast, but maybe you can just send the kids places in the pods <laughs> as well. But this is not what we're talking <laughs> about. Right. So this would 
solve so many problems, get rid of the waste from the plastic and paper bags. It would uh, make the shopping experience quicker. If you're, if there are a bunch of you in an aisle at the store, you know, my pod can just go higher to go around your pod or go over your pod. Grocery pods, let's do it. We already have the technology. Seamless, cannot be a problem with it. Do it now. All right, I, I can I can get behind that. Here is though, if we don't have the pods, and I'm in physically in the grocery store, here is the problem that we need to solve. The me that buys all of the produce on a Sunday afternoon is not the me that is going to cook dinner on a Tuesday night. Those are two different people. Yes, we would. I would love to get them together. <laughs> Actually, there's like five different me's <laughs> right. if we're talking about things that we buy as opposed to things that we use. So I need reality checks in the, the in the places in the store. That's not like it's not the frozen food. It's not the you know, shelf stable, like box of Triscuits. I don't need a reality check at the box of Triscuits, but at like the summer squash or the asparagus or the, you know, like whatever the protein is, it's going to take long. I need a reality check sign that just says, "Mm, are you really going to do this? And if they want to animatron it, like it, it makes me think of like, like, like those, um, little characters from Harry Potter that grow out of the, the mandrakes that scream, but like something that would just pop up and be like, (laughs) Really? Are you really going to use this? And I think it would save me a lot of money and it would eliminate food waste because I wouldn't be buying things I'm not going to use that then wind up getting thrown away. This is not a technology that the grocery store would employ, you understand, (laughs) because this would run counter to everything that they're all about. So this would be a third party product that you would get. Why don't you just have me come along with you and say... (laughs) Because, no, I know because the answer. you said there's five different yous. No, because I know the answer. The answer is it's me, and you would buy it just to spite me. You'd buy three of them just to spite me. We have a really good relationship. <laughs> oh, really? So, in other words, you love it when I ask you to do, or when I tell you to do things, yes. or when I suggest yes. you to do things. Yes. Okay, so you need, like, a little, like, maybe something that'll sit on your shoulder. Yeah, yeah. A little, a little grocery a, angel. A little, a little grocery gnome. A little grocery angel, something like are you really is this something that you need to spend the money on will you eat this okay perfect got it down next thing for me can't find what i'm looking for when you ask me to get something at the store it fills me with anxiety if i've never gotten that thing before Mm -hmm. and i don't know where it is because i'm notoriously bad at wayfinding okay but our specific grocery store chain it is part of their business rule that if a Customer asks an associate where something is, they must actually take them to that place. So you could just ask the people where something is. Oh, well, that's the other problem, this social anxiety thing. Right, okay. Most of the time, my mood hat is set on <laughs> don't want to talk to other people. Okay, go ahead. So this one is an easy one that I think can happen tomorrow. Okay. Like, we don't even need to send this to Gerber, baby. We send it to Google. Okay. Expand Google Maps so that they add store interiors. I mean, it already does it for um, like larger shopping centers. So when the 16-year-old is at the mall or at our outdoor and shopping center and I'm looking for her location, it will tell me exactly what store in the mall she's in or what, you know. So it's already does it for larger shopping centers to store. So therefore, it can just, you know, narrow in on specific items. It would behoove the grocery store chains to provide Google with this information. I don't know how they collect it the information, but I think that they do it themselves. But they partner with the stores. The stores give them a map indicator of where all the products are in the store. And Google now includes that on their maps. And not only will it tell you where the Jamie Dodgers and the eggs and the toothpicks are, it will tell you the best route to take, the most efficient route to take. Because I can't tell you how many times I'll do the first sweep of of the store and then be like, oh, damn it, I got to go back to aisle two because I forgot to get Mm -hmm. this or that. Mm -hmm. And I waste so much time. They must look at me in the store like this guy, please call an authority (laughs) because he's just wandering back and forth in our store. Sorry, but this would eliminate that. So not only would we know where the stuff is, but it would show us the most efficient way to get there. And you can you can program in, is this with or without a restroom stop? And it'll calculate, (laughs) calculate that as well. 
Also, sometimes finding restrooms in stores is, is a bit of a panic situation. So, Especially when you have a small child who's like going to pee in the aisle if you don't get them immediately to the bathroom. I, I will tell you, I have employed a, a similar technology that already exists when I've been in Target because I have the Target app. And when I cannot find something in Target, I will open the Target app. I will search for what it is. And then I will say like pick in-store pickup. And then it will tell you aisle A8. Like it will tell you what aisle the, that thing is on so that I can just go Well, find that's it. great. But now give me the 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 most efficient route as well yeah. so that I can get so in I'm and out. Because God really knows close. I don't want to be in that store for very long. No, any of the stores. I know. But we're really close is what I'm saying. This is achievable. <laughs> that's, that's a first for this show. Go ahead. All right. So my last one is I need... I don't know if you do this at your work, but we are working on sort of an agile business management product workflow methodology. We're putting processes in place. And one of the things is assigning effort to a certain task so that we know how long it's going to take somebody to do it. I need effort reports for things that I try to buy at the grocery store. So if I go in saying, I'm going to make a London broil and I'm going to buy all these ingredients or I want to make a homemade lasagna, that somewhere along the line, the grocery store intuitively figures out based on my per- my items I'm putting into this cart, maybe it's like the cart is sensing it and there's a little screen and then it gives me an effort report. This will take you three hours and 72 glasses of wine and 800 curse words to make this Sunday dinner. <laughs> I need, it's kind of like the reality check, yes. but it's also the effort report for, it seems great when I'm putting all the ingredients in there, but then what it actually means for me is a different story. We do this when we get we get food boxes delivered to home and they give it I mean they do everything. They pre-portion the th- the ingredients, they give us the instructions and more often than not we just throw the instructions away and just make <laughs> something with the stuff. So, I just need to know effort reports based on my ingredients about what I'm going to create. It's funny because if I were to do that, if I were to have this report or an assessment of my cart, when I go in the grocery store, I'd get all of the stuff in the cart, and the cart would look at it and say, what the absolute <laughs> hell do you think you're going to make with this crap? I don't, so I will not want this. Well, there are apps that you can put in everything that's in your refrigerator and your pantry, and it will like shoot you recipes based on the ingredients that you currently have that you can make. So your cart would, it would be fun for your cart. It would be like a puzzle for the, the AI or the computer system to figure <laughs> out what it is exactly that could be put together with, I don't know, 12 bottles of olive oil and a giant steak and like green onions. Well, that's it. You well, no, do that's those easy. things. That you no, do that, those things. That's easy. Especially when I was uh, single in my younger years, if we had this technology, the, the cart would look at my things and it would just immediately call a doctor. <laughs> All right, well, that's my last one. I need an effort report like we have at work on how long it takes to make these things and what it will take out of me. My last one is healthy shopping. That I think that's a thing. I was looking up as I was thinking about this particular thing. Seven foods you think that are healthy but are not. So like example, breakfast cereal. Oh, no, it's bad. Well, of course, but they say like good source of vitamin D, high in fiber, antioxidants. Which is what I justify giving the children Lucky Charms with in the morning because the six-year-old does not like to eat things and yells at me. And so we've settled on Lucky Charms with whole milk and he's getting some some calcium, some protein, some full fat because he's a skinny little thing and, and some vitamins from the Lucky Charms. Well, are they though? Because these things go through so much processing. And in general, my problem is with processed food because let's say you have like ODOs, like it's made of oats or whatever. I I may have just made up that that name. There might have been something good about that oat before it it got processed. Like these little rings that you give our child probably had vitamins at one point, but once you (laughs) process them, all the stuff's gone. Yeah. The fiber, the vitamins, everything. Subway sandwiches, you know, saying eat fresh and they are a healthy alternative to fast food. They might have fewer calories, fat, and sodium than what you get at McDonald's, but pretty much everything does. But unless you get a sandwich that's nothing but vegetables, it's there's Processed. not much uh, that's yeah. fresh about it. They say that their loaves are like these fresh things. The reality is they're super processed, run through these factories, loaded up with additives. 
And in then fact, frozen one of the one shipped. one of the things, and I can't say this, but it's known to break down into a carcinogen when heated. Cool. And is a chemical used in the production of foam plastics. So there you go. Awesome. <laughs> it said this article says when a tanker truck carrying this substance overturned on a Chicago highway several years ago, city fire officials had to issue their highest hazmat alert and evacuate everyone up to a half a mile downwind. But we're gonna mm, put fresh. these in our mouths. <laughs> Good, excellent. Yogurt. Everyone says yogurt is this healthy alternative. So I actually just read an article from the New York Times on yogurt, and it was like the which ones are the best and which ones are the worst out of all the different categories. By and large, the ones that were the worst were the things that had like the M and M's added or the <laughs> well, yeah. like chocolate but, caramel, whatever. Well, but even when they add fruit, it's yeah. it's highly syrupy. I always think of Greek yogurt as being the most like the you get the not sweetened, and then you can add fresh berries or whatever. But I learned that Icelandic yogurt, which I've now started eating with the low sugar versions of them, not and it's not the fake sugar that's been added. There just isn't very much sugar in it. They are higher in protein than Greek yogurt. And I really enjoy them. And it's like, it's nice. It gives me a nice little, like a little tiny kind of sweetness, but I don't like overly sweet things anyway. That's my secret nickname for you, little tiny sweetness. Oh, that's good. Last one is plant-based milk. A lot of people think that plant-based milks like soy, almond, and rice milks are better than cow's milk. However, these milks don't have the same nutrient mix as cow's milk. Plus, many plant-based milks, especially the flavored varieties, are loaded with fat mm -hmm. and sugar. Mm -hmm. See, I didn't know that. I assumed that they were healthier. Well, I've tried the oat milk because of the 16-year-old's uh, lactose uh, sensitivity. And the only thing is it just doesn't have protein. So what's the point? The food companies think that if we don't advertise that this stuff is super healthy when it's not, then people won't buy it and they won't make money. I disagree. The fact that everyone on this planet, even if you were not familiar with our society and with anything in our society, you plop down here from a remote place, you took one look at McDonald's food, you know you that, that that crap is not good for you. It's not good for you, but you'd eat it of because course it you would. looks people, very attractive. People make those choices all the time. In fact, I dare say they enthusiastically choose to eat the bad thing. I do, and it's so bad because McDonald's is really a guilty pleasure of mine because of nostalgia reasons. Not because I think that it tastes good. When I was younger, it was an indulgence, and I also had a very... Dear older relative who every Christmas gave us the McDonald's bucks, like the McDonald's coupon things for Christmas. And then that was, you know, I'd get a Happy Meal or whatever. So I still, the other day, I left the dentist. I was going to work. I went through McDonald's. Such a bad choice. I got a triple cheeseburger and then just didn't eat the buns because I'm not, I'm not eating the carbs. Three McDonald's cheeseburger patties, probably not a good choice either. I think that they should set up grocery stores so that there's a good for you section and a not good for you section. So at least we would know and we can make our informed decisions. So I'm asking on the manufacturers, the stores to trust us, to trust us to make good decisions, but also to trust us to make bad decisions. Just let us make our own decisions. So I would probably spend some time in the good for you portion of the store. I would feel the call of the processed sugar, and mm -hmm. so I would go over there to the carbs and all this, get some stuff. But I would be deciding, I would make the mix. It would be up to me. And here's the thing, stores. Here's the thing, food manufacturers. I'd be willing to bet that these things that you're labeling healthy, that aren't. These things that you are labeling good for you, that actually are not. There's people looking at that and saying, oh, I'm not buying that, that probably doesn't taste good. Because it's good for me, right? Because yes. it's good for me. And like that's where we get double screwed because guess what? It ain't good for you. <laughs> so just let us know. Let us make our own decisions. Lean on the example of McDonald's and Burger King and all of these. They don't try to these... pretend like they're healthy. Oh Well, sometimes they do, but we all know. It's cute. <laughs> it's cute. It's like, oh, isn't that sweet what you're doing? Now go play. You right, know, it's that right. sort of thing. Yes. Listen, if our political system does not teach us anything else it's that people willingly choose things that are bad for them I, yeah so lean into that in fact there's an advertising slogan this is the worst thing ever for you and people will take it as a dare i mean we eat these damn hot chips when we know we shouldn't you know the hot mm -hmm, chip challenge mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just let us make the choice 
That's mine. What I have heard from uh, a dietitian is that you should approach grocery shopping by shopping the outer edges of the store. So anything that's on the aisles, other than like the cleaning products, anything that's on the aisles or tend to be all of the processed, shelf-stable, not good for you things. So that if you want to make healthy choices, you can shop the um, the proteins, the produce, the fruit, the deli. I mean, deli has processed meats, but it also has other things too, like the rotisserie chicken and stuff. So shop the outer edges of the grocery store and leave the leave the middle aisles alone. Excellent. The things that we have that we have to narrow down to five, we have six of them, so we only need to get rid of one cool. of them. Zoom Instacart, grocery pods that fly to your door and back, reality check in the grocery store, the grocery store gnome, <laughs> I like that one, Google Maps for stores, assigning effort, you know, what am I going to make and what sort of time is this going to take, and then the good side and the bad side of the stores. What do we get rid of? I would suggest getting rid of the last one because we already kind of know. Shop the edges. Don't shop the middle. What would you put forward to getting rid of? I don't know. I think that the reality check and the assigning effort are super close. Okay. We'll combine them. Reality check. Will you really cook this? Also, it's going to take you this long to do it. Right. The little gnome. Yeah. You're not going to like this gnome. (laughs) No, I don't. Realize that, that you're setting yourself up for an irritant in your life. That's fine. Aren't you happy he's not you? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, yes, absolutely. That's why I don't want to get rid of him. <laughs> Can he also like fold laundry and stuff? <laughs> right. We have decided that you have the choice of getting Instacart by Zoom so you can boss the little... Now, when you boss the little people around, are you going to have the gnome on your shoulder at home or you, is the gnome going to be on the shoulder of the Instacart No, person? no, it would have to or stay you, with me. No, you're going to be the gnome of that. It's going to be <laughs> okay. it's gonna be this weird thing where there's a gnome on a gnome. Okay. Right, or right. we have the choice of sending our pod to the store and back that's fun i can't wait for that we could also carry our little baby yoda in it Mm -hmm. we talked about the gnome (laughs) when we have our pod i guess what we do is that we will build the google map into our pod so we'll just follow up we'll tell our pod what we want we'll follow it around if we choose to go to the store right yes and then the good side and the bad side of the store just so we can have an informed choice wouldn't that be nice in this world I love it. I am most excited about unscrewing up grocery shopping. This was so easy for me to come up with. I have done years of market research. I know the pitfalls of it. I am so happy that the Gerber baby is going to fix it for me. This is the best that we we will ever do. This is the moment that you were primed for. You've hit your peak. You can retire as a (laughs) podcaster now. All right. You can do the show by yourself then? No. No way. All right. So we consider that grocery shopping has been unscrewed. Unscrewed. All right, we have a question, Amanda. And actually, this question also, I think it it speaks to us. Dear Josh and Amanda, our family is non-traditional, and we don't really go to church or even celebrate Easter that much. Everyone else around us is having fun. What can we do on Easter to still have fun? Well, all of the traditional things other than the church service and the cross, all of the traditional things, the Easter eggs, the bunny, the flowers, that's all really rooted in ancient traditions of celebrating spring. But I'm reading into this question, and maybe I shouldn't because I don't know these people, but our family is non-traditional. Maybe they also don't particularly care for the traditions of Easter, like Easter bunny... They don't want an egg hunt. I don't know. Like, I'm constructing in my mind, and this is where we need follow-up questions. This is where we should do a live show, because we can do follow-up questions. Like, maybe, again, this is these are like people who just want to take a different spin. Maybe they want to make fun of it. Like, may, like teasing. Like, have yeah. fun with it and just be kind of quirky and ironic and stuff about it, too. So, what, you have something in mind. What I do. It? I have a list. Oh, goodness. Well, I will just say before you get to your list that my favorite Easter tradition was started by friends of ours. And they do the egg hunt, but they also do the beer hunt. <laughs> That's good. Yes. And so they would hide. It's been a while since we participated, but they would hide eggs for the children and then beer. So everybody would bring eggs and like a six pack. And then they would hide, (laughs) they would go out and they would hide it. And then the children could go and they'd come back after they found one thing. And then the parents could go and find one beer and come back. But this was the best 
most fun Easter egg hunt that I have ever participated and in. And at the end of the day, we have children hopped up on <laughs> sweets, driving their parents home. <laughs> That's right. All right. So this is a, a top 10 list of things that you can do for a non-traditional Easter season. Okay. Drum roll, please. Dress up as a giant carrot and walk around town with a sign saying, eat me for better eyesight. <laughs> you have cracked yourself up. Take a selfie with a stuffed bunny and post it on social media with a sign that says, Easter Bunny, if you ever want to see him alive again, pay me my money. That's really dark. Okay. Yeah, well, this is what he... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Organize an egg hunt in your backyard, except instead of using Easter eggs, hide laundry that your kids have to put away. <laughs> I saw a meme yesterday that said Easter egg hunts are proof that children can find things if they really want to. Yeah, I love that. I see that's why I never find anything in yeah. Easter. Create a parody video of the Easter story or a famous Easter movie like The Passion of the Christ. Oh, God. We just got canceled. Go ahead. And some of these aren't funny. They're just like different quirky ideas. Okay. I'm not just trying to be a comedian here. I'm trying to help. All right. Make Easter-themed desserts but with unusual ingredients like broccoli or wasabi. <laughs> I don't even know what that would be, but okay. Make an uneaster craft that are completely unrelated to Easter, like making a piñata in the shape of a potato and then fill it with cheese and sour cream. Oh, I want that. Oh, God, I'm so <laughs> hungry right now. Celebrate anti-Easter by eating foods that rabbits don't like. <laughs> Like sour cream and cheese. I'm like there broccoli for or wasabi. I'm, no, the the bunnies eat broccoli. Dress up as a yeah. giant egg and hide from your family. That's good. <laughs> I want to do that. That's so good. <laughs> Have a peep hunger games competition oh, where you put God. where you put two peeps in a microwave and watch them battle it out <laughs> and then eat them. Oh God. And lastly <laughs> celebrate an Easter themed holiday that's kind of adjacent to Easter. Like World Zombie Day. Is that Easter? Oh, got it. Yes. Okay. I mean, that's that. you could say that one is inspired by the other. Yeah, got it. So there you go. Those are my solutions for a non-traditional celebration of Easter. Amanda, do you have anything to add to I that? don't, but I cannot wait to see your giant egg costume. <laughs> All right, Amanda, I think we done unscrewed up all that we can unscrew up. I think you just screwed up a little bit, but yes. <laughs> what, what? What? This is all in good fun. I know. It is all in good fun. So the next time you go to the grocery store and you're struggling with your cart, I want you just to fantasize about your Google Maps pod following you to the good parts of the store. And just remember that this part of the Wilsons gave you constructive advice that you can put into place right now. You can shop the outside of the grocery store to make healthy choices. And then if you're not going to make the healthy choices, or even when you are trying to make the healthy produce choices, imagine your gnome on your shoulder. Get mad at him, not me. Or her. Or them. I mean, I, I, I gendered him because I tend to get more mad at you than anybody else. A bald gnome. Great. That's right. We are a part of the Whole Care Network. It's a network that is dedicated to providing resources and support for people who take care of people. And believe it or not, this podcast is meant to offer you <laughs> resources and support. Mostly, we just want you to, to take a few minutes to laugh, to have fun, to consider the lighter things of life. And hopefully that refreshes you and, and gets you ready to face the rest of your day. All right, folks. So until next week, I have been Josh. I'm Amanda. And whatever you do, don't screw it up. Bye. How to make the perfect Easter egg with Gary Carr. Hi, I'm Gary Carr. In addition to having a top performing auto talk show slash podcast, I also make pretty darn good Easter eggs. The best. So here are my steps to making the perfect Easter egg. Step one, start by finding the perfect egg. It must be neither too big or too small and must have been laid on a full moon by a chicken that was clucking to Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. Winning egg making. Next, 
Put on your favorite bunny ears and dance around the kitchen while chanting eggs, eggs. They're so great. They're so great. Next, crack the egg on the floor and let it sit there for exactly 13 minutes and 42 seconds. No longer, no shorter. Next, mix together mud, chocolate syrup, and glitter. Trust us, it will make an amazing looking egg. Go get it. Next, Dip the egg into the mixture and let it dry for as long as it takes to sing the entire alphabet backwards. Educational. Once the egg is dry, use your imagination and draw all sorts of wild and wacky designs on it. Maybe a dinosaur riding a unicycle while eating pineapple with sunglasses on the pineapple. Traditional. Finally, hide your egg somewhere in the house and challenge your friends and family to find it. The winner gets a basket of carrots, of course. Helps with your eyesight. And there you have it, folks. The most perfect eggs brought to you by me, Gary Carr. And me, Gary Carr. Have fun and keep on clucking. <laughs> this is the Whole Care Network. Helping you tell your story one podcast at a time.